Dear viewers, today we will talk about very important topic of discussion and that is introduction and the importance of major series. In this topic we will introduce about the series and major series and we will also discuss about their importance in, in human diet. So let's start. Cereals basically are the members of the grass family and the, that is botanically or the technically known as the gramini or the poesy family. And important feature of the cereals that uh, these are used for the ed uh, for edible starchy seeds because their edible starchy seeds are eaten as food source and energy source. And not all the members of the grass family are called cereals. Only those members are called cereals whose uh, starchy seeds are edible. And the next important feature is that these uh, cereals are rich in energy, easily grown, easy to store and easily processed. And if we talk about uh, the um, consumption, almost half of the animal production is used for the human food. And uh, these cereals are also the primary food for the dairy, draft animals, poultry and wild birds. Basically, there are two groups of the cereals that are called the major cereals and the minor cereals. This classification is very arbitrary or the random and it is depending upon the area under cultivation, production and consumption. So, any cereal in minor group can come to the major group or any in the major group can move to the minor group if their area production and consumption are changed. So if we talk about the characteristics features of the cereals, uh, how particularly we can define or this, these are actually the characteristic features of the grass family. And initially cereal plants have the initial set of the roots which are called the seminal roots. These are basically a 3 to 8 in number and developing directly from the hypocotyl. Then after that there is development of the second round of the roots or the second set of the roots which are permanent in nature and directly arise below the surface of ground. If we talk about the leaves, leaves of the cereals are composed of two parts. One is the leaf sheath and the other is leaf blade. Leaf sheath is actually enclosing the stem which is also called as skull. And the other features include the cereals have variable sizes and shapes of the ligule. Ligules are actually the appendages that are present in cereals of the gramini family at the junction of uh, leaf sheath and leaf blade. The stem of the cereals is comprising of nodes and internodes that is characteristic features of the cereals and the grain of in cereals is produced in specialized structures which may be called as the spike, panicle and ear. Spike is called the fruit structure of uh, the wheat. Panicle is called for the rice and ear is for maize. If we enlist the member of the grass family which are used or eaten for their starchy seeds, starchy grains or the cereals, they are en enlisted here. So these are starting from the wheat, rice, maize, barley, sorghum, oats, triticale, rye, millers and teff. So, so very next to the, their uh, common name, here are given their botanical names which are uh, reflecting the generic name from the genus and the species name of that particular species. So the for wheat botanical name is Triticum estiva, for rice is Oryza sativa, for maize is Z maize, for barley is Hordia vulgar, for sorghum is sorghum bicolor, for oats it's avina sativa, for triticale it's tritico cicale, for rye it's cicale cereal, for millers it's penicillium glaucum, for tap it's regurtus tap. So 
how we can define the major serials or the minor serials here are basically three serials which are known as the major serials that is phi trice and mace based on their dominance in cultivation production and consumption across the world so based on on this typical criteria of cultivation production and consumption these are called as major cereals there are not differences in their characteristics characteristics features their all other features are same with other cereals so this and this classification or this distinction is only based on their dominance in area production and consumption so next we will discuss all these major cereals one by one if we talk about the most important uh, and the leading cereal the wheat it has one third share in total global cereal production if we talk about all cereals the one third share is contributed by wheat only and the wheat is basically consumed by almost 37% of the world population and it has 20% share in total food calories Uh, taken, uh, taken or the consumed by the men there are there basically two types of the wheat, wheat. One, one is the is bread wheat, wheat that is called as triticum estivum the other is durum wheat that is known as triticum tergitum bread wheat is hexaploid as 6x genome whereas durum wheat is tetraploid that has 4x genome Durum wheat is particularly used for pasta making whereas the bread wheat is used for all other wheat based food products Bread wheat may also be divided into two types the hard wheat and the soft wheat Hard wheat actually has more protein contents more gluten which make it useful for baking the of bread whereas soft wheat is concerned it has lower protein contents and it produces cake flour which is useful for making sweet biscuits and cakes if we talk about the nutritional profile of the wheat wheat grain is actually has low fat contents but has higher carbohydrate contents it means starch protein contents in the wheat is are also relatively higher as compared to other cereals these are basically ranging from 11 to 13% and protein in the wheat make a special complex that forms a gluten the wheat grain has the gluten that's uh, has a new concern actually now these days because some people have the gluten allergy Uh, wheat is also source of vitamin b complex or vitamin e the wheat grain also has iron zinc magnesium phosphorus and selenium contents but their concentration is depending upon the fertility fertility level of the soil if we talk about the rice that is second most important cereal and this is actually or the currently being grown in more than 100 countries and rice is currently staple food for more than 1.6 billion people across the world and only asia is growing 90% of the world's harvestable rice and uh, there is also need to make some clarification that uh, is between the paddy rice and the polished rice the paddy rice is actually the raw rice which has a complete set of glooms intact like the lemma and pelia and it generally it is a raw form which is harvested from the field so after cleaning hulling polishing and the grading it produces the polished and white rice so this is the only processing difference between the paddy rice and polished rice if we talk about the nutritional profile of the rice almost 85% of energy in the rice 
is coming from the starch sources or the carbohydrates protein is second main component after the starch in the rice and uh, rice grain is has low fat contents and its bran has higher insoluble dietary fiber rice grain also has the vitamins from the b complex and vitamin e rice grain is also containing iron zinc magnesium phosphorus and selenium and their concentration in the grain again depending upon the nutritional profile of the soil rice grain is also containing small amount of copper magnesium and calcium and the rice grain is basically gluten free that is most important feature and most non allergenic grain compared to all other cereal grains and we will talk a very interesting factor <coughs> that wheat and rice only two are contributing 50% share in global food energy that's interesting that these two cereals are have 50% share whereas the rest of the 50% contributed by all other energy sources that may be the crop plants that may be the animal source whichever it may be so the 50% contribution share is going only to the wheat and rice that's huge contribution actually if we talk about the third member of the major cereals that is corn or the maize and this is actually one of the sweetest taste having grains and it is used for making bre uh, breakfast cereals and tortillas tortilla actually the product uh, purely made from the maize especially in latin america and it is widely used in food manufacturing and important feature is that maize is unable to reproduce itself without human help because seed or the grain is tightly wrapped around the air and the husk is also tightly covering them so they are not dehiscent they are unable to disperse by themselves so they need human help for their dispersal and if we talk about the nutritional profile of the maize the maize grain is actually has higher carbohydrate contents and also relatively higher dietary fibers the fat content is also higher as compared to other major cereals and because maize grain has 4 to 5% fat but protein contents in the maize grain is relatively lower as compared to other major cereals and it is ranging from almost 10% and also lower in uh, vitamin and mineral contents when we compare it with other major cereals and it has also as compared to wheat and rice the it has vitamins from the b complex and vitamin e and maize grain is also containing iron zinc magnesium phosphorus and selenium a grain their concentration in the grain is depending upon the nutritional profile or the fertility profile of the soil and maize grain has another feature that it has relatively higher concentration of plant sterols as compared to other grains and yellow or the orange maize or the corn has beta carotene contents where these are actually variable in different uh, varieties and this beta carotene is the precursor of vitamin a or pro vitamin a that actually transforms into vitamin a and importantly this is gluten free so that was all about uh, the major series please share us your comments thank you very much